Namaste. Namaste. And welcome to everyone. I'm very, very grateful after a period of almost two years to be back with my beloved friend, Alok Bhai. Namaste. It's a joy I share. We ended our last session about two years ago with explorations in Savitri. And for this series, I suggested a title from a very extraordinary statement by Mother. Savitri is the message. All else is preparation. Well, this is an incredible statement. Absolutely. And I know that both of us feel this so strongly. Completely. Because Savitri has, over the years, been severely criticized by many, many poets, by many writers. And I think now it's changing. I think it's coming to the other side, where more and more people are beginning to read Savitri, yes, yes. to appreciate it. And Mother has told us that if you read two lines a day and don't try to understand them with the mind and keep reading them, they will come and you will understand them from something much above the mind. So let us begin. Yes, so um, just a few thoughts on this wonderful message of the Mother. Uh, very instinctively or intuitively, I always felt that Savitri is the complete book. And uh, if I look at it very um, logically, not logically in the sense of the analytical mind, but just from the factual point of view. So we see that Sri works uh, can be categorized into maybe four distinct um, types and they represent four distinct phases of his spiritual um, I won't use the word development or self-revelation. So we have a period before the before Pondicherry, which are also wonderful, mantric. In, to me, everything of Sri is mantric. But that's a personal feeling because when he writes even prose, it flows like a wonderful stream, a river. There is a rhythm in... When I read the, you know, Bande Matram writings or even before that, they are so beautiful. So there is, there is a phase which is pre-1910. And then, of course, 1910 or 1912, 13, 14, we have few writings like thoughts and aphorism started around that period. Uh, we have yogic sadhan. But from 1914, this is the second phase where there is a different kind of writing which come. One can see that it's like a massive Hima Himalayan glaciers which are, uh, you know, melting down and <laughs> cascades of Ganges flowing. So there is a very distinctive difference between the writing be before 1910 and those during the Arya period. Much of the major works are the Arya, which includes some of the most powerful works like the Life Divine, the Synthesis of Yoga and the Human Cycle to And the Human Cycle and the Ideal of Human Unity. Ideal of Human Unity. Uh, part of that, yeah. Kitu has been ill for quite some time and he is now recovered and today was the first meeting wow. with him and next week at 4.30 uh, he will continue with the human cycle. Wonderful. So we have this, we have even the Renaissance of India. So all these works are from 1914 to 1920. Then after the mother's final coming, we have a third phase which starts. For six years almost we don't see anything very major coming up. But the first books that comes after that period, which is 1927, uh, after the, uh, you know, Krishna's uh, complete fusion with Sri his personality, the avataric personality, the mother assuming charge of the disciples and a kind of, not a formation, but uh, well, uh, something like an ashram begins to be formed as a seed plot. And then 1927, we have the mother. So, this is the third phase. Now, the difference is so palpable that if you look at all that is before that, uh, suddenly in front of this small booklet, the mother, which is just about six letters, that appears as if it's a condensation of all of this. This is my impression. And long back, um, Dr. Maheshwari, he had, you know, when we were reading this book together, this is one of the books I got from uh, Harvard Station platform. Grace, 
the train was just 10 minutes to depart and I was desperate, I must need a book, I must, I need a book to read and I ran to the Higginbotham stall, Higginbotham, so all the places and I could have never imagined that they have something, uh, you know, on Shirobindo. They don't keep such things. So I thought maybe something on Sri Ramakrishna, that's the closest. So I said, any Ramakrishna book is there because they keep those books. And he said, no, uh, we have the mother. So I thought Mother Sarda's book. I said, okay, give me whatever you have. <laughs> and I just ran with the book. I didn't even see who is the author, what. And Shirobindo was running with me or rather making me run, uh, you know, because by then I had already uh, turned towards Shirobindo. And I didn't know such a book exists because I had read the synthesis, Secret of the Vedas. And then I sit in the train and I look at Shirobindo and I am like, oh, Shirobindo has written this. <laughs> it was all. <laughs> I remember that six-hour journey, reading the mother and it was like very clear it's all about the Divine Mother who is embodied. Not a moment of single doubt and I realized, this contains everything. I don't need to read anything else. So Maheshwari ji later on told it's the Beej Mantra. It is like the, you know, the seed of everything else that one can contain. So it's a book which is apart. And the first sentence. Yeah. There are two powers. Yes, that alone. One can affect in their conjunction. So suddenly we see that the shift that takes place is from, if you read through 1914 to 1920, there is a lot about, of course there is a grace, but there is personal effort. If you read through the synthesis, I remember when somebody had visited uh, Bikane, just to give a little background, uh, he had come from ashram and I told him, ki, you know, uh, what I have understood from the synthesis, I said yoga has to be done this way, will, effort of will, all this. So he listened to me very patiently about all this talk about will and effort. Then after 10 minutes, he was literally, you know, lolling in his chair and he says, he said in Hindi, then I'll repeat in English. He said, But Sri Aravind to surrender ki baat karte hai. You know, but Sri Aravind speaks of surrender. I said, is it? <laughs> now this was for me like, surrender? Yes, that word is there in the synthesis itself, surrender the way of the Gita. But the way he speaks of surrender when the mother comes in. And then we see a third set of writing which are primarily letters. The mother itself is letters. Which runs right up to the end. And... Um, of course, for a moment, that bulletin writings, which was done at the, you know, when mother had requested him, 49 to 50. But the fourth, which I am, you know, which starts from almost Baroda, Earth and Beyond, 1916 is taken up, but primarily from 1927 onwards, which is Savitri. So what I find special about Savitri is, in a way, the mother contains the kernel of the teaching. But Savitri, one, it's completely through and through mantric, which is in the line of the highest Vedic poetry. So although his prose is also like a poetry, but it's very different from the heights from where Savitri comes. See, these are sure been those words. We are, you know, leave aside uh, our ignorant judgment. But he himself said that in, in uh, Synthesis of Yoga, when he was asked to revise the book, he said, oh, you want me to come down to that level? I have brought the truth down to the higher mind level. But Savitri says that my whole effort was to through and through over-mentalize the lines. So one is it comes from a very high source and that purity, everything of Shivabindu comes from the high source. But in terms of the words, it contains the rhythms of the highest possible world that can be ever put in human speech. I have a, had a student tonight who was asking me, uh, well, what about Japa and what about mantra? I said, we are doing mantra yeah, every exactly. moment. <laughs> exactly. And when with the mother's word that it is the mantra of transformation. And another thing very beautiful I find about Savitri is uh, amazing. It's entire panorama of human life, creation, from its origin to its final consummation, everything is there. And even the human life, in all its shades, is touched. And so marvelously, beautifully uplifted, sublimated to what heights. So uh, definitely when I look at Savitri, I see it's a complete, complete book. Nothing else is really needed. And finally, something very interesting, and I would like to read a passage after that is uh, the final version of Savitri as it came uh, considerably expanded. Book 2 has been considerably expanded. And of course, uh, um, he had gone through the experience of entry into the deepest layers of the inconscient. 
this is something which in when we read the 1914 to 1920 there is the ascension constantly one can feel that there is uh, the yogi of yogi standing on the high mountain tops of summits of creation and saying come 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 walk this way walk that way there is a little thing there but he is on the mountain tops with savitri we see that someone who is not only seen the mountain tops but entered into the abysses of creation which is what second world war was about and uh, we we know that you know note by nirod baran that in 1947 onwards you know when shubhind saw that humanity is not responding rather 1944 45 so mother says instead of blaming humanity he saw that man is not ready he went into the inconscient to cure it from there that experience of entry into the thickest night he has traveled into the night several times but thickest densest night which post second wall had split open hell had literally split open we see that that is where we see the joining of the two poles of creation whose final um, you know had he not started. had he not done that he said the evolution would have been set back thousands of years thousands of years and he also said something very interesting that uh, when nirod baran asked him or he asked nirod baran uh, is savitri completed and nirod baran said no there are two books that are not yet finished the book of death and the last book the return to earth and sri arbindo's comment was so telling he said we shall see about that later you remember one of your favorite lines which uh, uh, even when we fail to look into our souls or lie embedded in earthly consciousness still have we parts that grow towards the light now these magical powerful lines which come after that descent into the hell and then coming out they are the you know creation of someone who had seen the thickest darkest blackest night then he could give the hope that even when we fail to look into our souls and he brought the light down light down and join the these the there are as they say that vedas there are two places where the veda is there <laughs> one is in the higher worlds and um, uh, just a little story and then i want to read a passage so the vedas are in the higher worlds in the rishis climb and then they hear or see the soul sees and then they put it in rhythmic speech there is another veda which is the same veda but in its completeness it is there which is embedded within earth as its uh, blueprint now this is a complete book now rishis keep receiving mantras and there is no end to the disclosure it's infinite literally but down below in the earth it's there is a compressed divine document and that's how the story goes that uh, before the beginning of another cycle of creation you know at the time when pralaya comes so the vedas are stolen and submerged into the subconscious dark terrains and the lord has to go down rescue the vedas so that's how when the first avatar is asked that what is your work fish and the fish says vedanu dharte i am rescuing the vedas now this original document which is down below which is complete document that can be rescued only if somebody is ready and willing to go down otherwise we will always receive fragments so on one side we have wonderful Uh, secret of the vedas and you know rather the vedic document the upanishads which ring with a very high truth but this rescuing of the document which is lying in the darkness that we see in savitri and uh, can i read a passage is <laughs> so wonderful which always reminds me of i often say this that this is how savitri was finally born and you know that during world war 2 sri arbindo says i have no time for savitri yes imagine. my most important work he has used the words my most important work yes so we can imagine he himself has said this is his most important work. yes and for the mother like just reading it is to do yoga of transformation 
So that easy, he made it so easy that just reading the book becomes engaging in the yoga. And she said to Udar, Savitri is a mantra for the transformation of the world. So we have these lines um, on page 232 and they always uh, give me a sense of the birth of Savitri from this utter darkness in which uh, this secret sun is hidden inside. Page 232 and from the first line from top. Falsehood gave back to truth her tortured shape. So that's where he goes and corrects. That's what we see in God's labor. He saw that a falsehood was planted deep in the very roots of earth. So he goes there and sees what is falsehood. After all, falsehood will also derive itself from that one truth because there is nothing else. So what does it do? Mother says it twists the truth. Tortured sheep. So someone has to go there and rescue it by correcting it there. So falsehood gave back to truth her tortured shape. And now see such beautiful lines which make us feel that, you know, that's what Savitri is about. Annulled were the tables of the law of pain. This has been my experience. Mother has also spoken about the healing power of Savitri. And uh, I know one small little experience I have shared sometimes, but when um, I used to read Savitri, both of us would read at night around 10 o'clock. After coming from center in Patiala, then have our dinner and then night we went, everything is quiet and before sleeping. And on the other side, it was a house with a joint wall, like this beyond the wall is somebody's house. One uh, sick gentleman. So one day he comes to, the, to my house and says, Sir, what do you read at night? So we thought that, you know, we are probably disturbing him because, you know, when we read, we read loud. Savitri, you know, super energizing. As when the mantra sings in yoga, <laughs> so we thought we are reading. So we said, uh, I'm sorry, probably, you know, I, I, we didn't, you know, maybe you are disturbed, but we have no other time to read. So he said, no, 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 I just want to see. So he went, saw the book, understood nothing, looked here, there, pages, he kept it back and then he came back. So I said, what is the, uh, why did you feel and feel like asking? He said, no, we have seen since the time you are reading this book, my son's asthma has gone, my chronic back pain has gone and there is a general atmosphere, he could sense it, that things have improved and he attributed it to the book which is so strange. So we were in the background, our coming at no meaning, <laughs> which is good. <laughs> Somehow something in him felt that it is the book that they read at night which is helping. And I know of at least few more instances, two more concretely, so one is my own and somebody else, that just reading Savitri helps in the healing process. And the mother has spoken about it. So we see here, an old. Yeah. Just before you, yeah. uh, I'll share one also, because this was extremely important. It was a moment when I was giving a lecture to the Plumeria Society of America. And uh, Plumeria Mother has named Psychological Perfection. I would always begin reading Savitri to these people who knew nothing about India or spirituality or anything. <laughs> <laughs> they just like plumerias, they like this flower. And so I read a passage, and each time I came, I would read a different passage, which would have to do with the beauty of the earth and the flowers and the plants. And I finished reading that day, and when my talk was finished, this very elderly lady comes up to me and she says, what is the name of that book? I must have it. And I gave her my copy because this is someone who never heard of Savitri, never heard of India, Eastern religion, anything like that. And Savitri had such an impact on her. Beautiful. And she was in tears. Yes, I have met uh, such people. One of them, a girl staying in uh, Mexico mm -hmm. who knew nothing, even never come to the ashram. 
and she was going through a deep depression and she saw Savitri being sold in some, uh, you know, discounted price. Probably somebody had just uh, in, in waste or whatever way. So it was uh, from one of these roadside places she had picked up and she started reading it. And she said that my lone companion is Savitri. She never felt after that even coming and visiting any place. So when she communicated with me, I said, why don't you come to the ashram if you want to sit? I don't feel the need. Everything is there that I ever would have needed, I find here. I said, this is so marvelous. <laughs> and the paradox is, sometimes, as they say, the proverbial that too near to the sea and still not conversant. That <laughs> I need not speak further. But just to continue, annulled were the tables of the law of pain. And in their place grew luminous characters. Now you see the whole writing is described. This skillful pen man's unseen finger wrote. So we can, of course, these are several layers of meaning. But I love to visualize Sri the skillful pen man's unseen finger. This is the seen finger. There is the luminous finger which is unseen. Unseen finger wrote his swift intuitive calligraphy. People often say that Shurabindo's, uh, you know, yeah. letter handwriting is illegible. So I say, so I have told sometimes, it like calligraphy. So yeah, <laughs> that's why we are looking at it. A Lord is writing like a river is flowing. It's like waves. And you just can't figure out, you know, what these waves are. So, it is like that. So, uh, whenever we look at his handwriting, it cannot be understood only when we just look at through the lens of the eyes and the mind. There is a kind of intuitive sense which is required because it is an intuitive writing. And I remember Prithvi Singh Nahar when, you know, he could read it, putting it to the… Because he had grown into that consciousness. What is Shurabindo going to, you know, what, what he would normally write? Because sometimes you have words which are very similar. So here we have his swift intuitive calligraphy. Earth's forms were made his divine document. So what's Savitri about? It's about all the forms. And if you take earth in the sense of the earth principle, the entire material world is there. Right from its inception till earth's forms were made his divine documents. The wisdom embodied mind could not reveal. <laughs> In conscience chased from the world's voiceless breast. So this is exactly the action which he did going into the inconscient. And therefore he could bring out that marvel that uh, ultimately the diamond is hidden in the deepest depths of the earth. Transfigured were the fixed schemes of reasoning thought. So all this idea of trying to categorize Savitri into this uh, format, this meter, pentameter or ambic, all this is human mind. It's like trying to catch the rhythm of the flute of Krishna. So <laughs> Krishna is magic. <laughs> when he plays the flute, he is a master player. So he will play a rhythm today, play a different rhythm tomorrow. Now when we catch it and try to fix it with the format of the mind, it escapes it. So it has, that's its beauty. So here it is, transfigured where the fixed schemes of reasoning thought. Reasoning thought goes from point A to B to Z. But that's not how Savitri runs. In every passage, suddenly he is on the greatest heights, then he connects it to earth. Then he connects it to a third. It's like somebody showing a panorama all the time. The vision is of that. Even when the smallest particle is being touched, suddenly we see a blazing light, like in the little mind, when Sri describes to us all the different layers and finally the rational mind. And at the end he says, For nothing is known till aught remains unknown. Truth is known only when all is seen. Suddenly it's like a blaze of sight, revealing the entire thing in a new and marvelous same way toward the end it says, or we may find when all the rest has failed, hit deep in us the key to perfect change. So these are the ways he connects suddenly from the heights he connects us to the earth and from the earth he connects it to the heights. And here we see the inconscient being connected to the highest and, and heights. from the darkest 
yes. parts, the darkest, most difficult parts to read, moments come when he lifts us just Oh, like yes. Lifts, lifts it. Here itself, it is, it, this part comes after the end of the world of falsehood, toward the end. Arousing consciousness in things inert, this is the action of Savitri. It doesn't matter whether we understand or not. One may be inert than the inert, <laughs> but Savitri will arouse consciousness. As you gave this beautiful example, that people who don't know anything about Indic religion, thought or, you know, let alone Savitri, and they feel something, it arouses consciousness, it's its action. He imposed, mark the words, he imposed upon dark atom and dumb mass the diamond script of the imperishable. So all these three, four lines are all, if one has to describe in one phrase what Savitri is, it is the diamond script of the imperishable. Diamond is the word literally used for the supramental. And you have the supramental there and you have it in the depths of the earth. The diamond script of the imp That's why there are two symbols of the supermind, interestingly, which mother has spoken about, you know. One is the sun and the other is actually the diamond, the physical diamond. And if you really look at it, one is found blazing in top and it's formed, crystallized in earth nature is found down below in the depths of the, I mean, it's the lowest portion you have to go where you find the diamond. So it's very interesting that, you know, she has used the word diamond. In fact, Sri Aurobindo says, it is hard as a diamond and yet it is supple. And he says, very difficult to explain. And Jyoti Priya used to have a, a, a funny saying. She would say that a diamond is only a piece of coal that stuck to the job. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> wonderful. Can you say that again? It's such a wonderful thing. A diamond is only a piece of coal yeah. that stuck to the job. It's stuck to the job. I remember when people, one of the advice that people used to give when those who turned to yoga and would come here, so they would ask different people and all of them gave the similar advice. Parichanda, then... Uh, Chandradeep Ji, uh, Nalnida. So this is something which uh, Chandradeep once told. So the person came and, you know, in the beginning you are enthusiastic. I want to do this. What should I do? What kind of effort? He said, just stick on. <laughs> just stick on. <laughs> One year, just stick on. And then he said, after that, he said, stick on. Stay on. Just stay on. Just make sure that you stay on to the yoga. It will be done. But if you get restless and start, you know, <laughs> <laughs> then, so beautifully, that diamond is a piece of coal that has stuck on to its job. So, and mother speaks of endurance and faith. So, the diamond script of the imperishable, it is the um, way we can describe Sabitri. Even the book, it is the script. And script of the imperishable, the diamond script, it is the supreme revelation. That's how the mother puts it. It is the supreme revelation of the supreme. Then... A pain song, no, inscribed on the dim heart of fallen things. It's meant to uplift us. However fallen we may be, inscribed on the dim heart of fallen things, a pain song of the free infinite. It is it's pain song. Uh, what, what exactly would it's probably you will be? Beautiful chant yeah. of the infinite. infinite. So you can't... Uh, Infinite, it's, you can't limit it by any finite mind, by any finite format or logic. It is a chant, a song of the free, mark the word. Infinite itself means a kind of freedom, but there is an infinite which enters into the finite and there is a logic of it. But here it's a free, free infinite. And we can eventually, reading Savitri, feel the music. Yes, yes, absolutely. There is such music in Savitri. And the name, with a capital N, and the name, Foundation of Eternity. Name with a capital N. So name, you see, all names and forms which emerge 
are ways to express the ineffable who is formless and nameless what does he first create om that is the name now the beauty is mother says each line of savitri makes you it makes the perfect rhythm of the sound om so that name that power that first stir the first vibration is there contained within it and all other all the divine names you know um, give me the other line that uh, idiographs ha ah, yes 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 a prayer upon his lips and the great name this during the passes through darkness here must the traveler of the upward way for winding through hell turns the heavenward path must pause or walk um, slowly a prayer upon his lips and the great names that is how he will be saved because that name is the ultimate power nothing can stand all things which are made they owe their origin from there so the name that's the power of the divine name and all the divine names which have subsequently in different ways contain something of that and that's why the name of the divine is very important that's why when people were using shurbindo's name in different ways so much so great disciples of course uh, this uh, what was the name jaya devi 1928 so he goes she goes and tells shurbindo i do not like this lord that they call you ag <laughs> so shurbindo laughed and said oh is it they call me ag who calls ag no no they all call you ag i don't like it he kept quiet obviously mother must have known or then the whole notice was put in the ashram his full name is shurbindo she is not an honorific and i remember i was just sharing this today with someone that uh, when at the samadhi uh, there were two wonderful gentlemen <laughs> niruddha and amal kiran and both were hard of hearing so you know they would talk loudly and people who were around they didn't know whether to tell them no or what to do suddenly one will come and ask him something and the other is also hard of hearing so he would also but i used to enjoy that conversation for one reason not because i understood anything because it was far but every time amal kiran will say shurabindo it was so beautiful music full of sweetness i was waiting that you know again he will say shurabindo it was so powerful it was so much full of sweetness coming from the heart sure window he and he had that perfect diction so that name is in itself so powerful and that's why we see many of the mantras with the divine name within it and of course mother made it very simple ma so you know we avoid all the complications of you sure window speaks of the power of the word yes he gives the example of uh, the lord saying let there be light yes and there was light absolutely that is the power in fact mother says even ordinary words have power yes so it's a divine word so ideographs of the ineffable so they are like those uh, languages which are sign languages symbol languages so you know that's how it is and then comes another description so this is also a description of sabitri ideographs of the ineffable it's the all the everything all the luminous characters their symbols um, and then comes another description the lyric of love that waits through time a love which we all want in life but only the divine or one who is one with the divine can do it mother says that says my child i never forget someone whom i have seen only even once and not only cannot forget she says i hold myself responsible even when he has turned and gone away i never abandon there are many who abandon the grace there are many who abandon the grace but the grace never abandons so this is some that kind of love the lyric of love that waits through time and even in the physical plane 14 years dilip kumar roy's room was kept intact so many persons how she waits through lives we forget but she remember that's how the hope is 
what is going to happen in next life? She knows, then there is hope. <laughs> but if we say, what is going to happen, find an intellectual answer, then <laughs> all of us will have a part which may sound like a hopeless character. <laughs> but she is the hope. So we have the lyric of love that waits through time and the mystic volume of the book of bliss. What ananda, just reading it. I was sharing this experience yesterday in, um, in a central medical establishment in Delhi where I was posted. You know, we have to do all these pilots, EG and, you know, they're testing. So, uh, there were some people who came to know that I'm spiritually inclined and uh, they came to try to convert me and said, uh, you know, uh -huh. this and that and hundred things. So, I said, okay, I'm not interested. You don't want to be rude and discourteous, but, you know, whenever, no, no, you come once. I said, no, I don't need to come because I have found my way. No, 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 that way is the ultimate way. When he said all that, he said, look here, these are my questions. Uh, does your master have the answer? I had to be blunt. I said, I'm sorry, I'm being little rude, but since you are pressing me so hard, so I must say, does he have the answer? He said, no, these questions only God can answer. So I had the live divine on one side and of course Savitri always used to keep. I said, I have found the answers. If you want, I can pass it on to you. But you must have those questions. <laughs> so if you are only looking for some experience here and there, then it's a different thing altogether. So the mystic volume of the book of bliss, the hidden book has been found, the Veda, unwritten Veda. So it is the Veda which has always been hidden in the mystic, you know, of the highest Realms of the highest. That has been brought down and, you know, uh, brought to life here. And finally, and the message of the superconscient fire. So what is, what does God mean to say to us? We always say, he doesn't speak, he doesn't speak. Problem is when he speaks, we don't listen. So, you know, he has spoken. Of course, he speaks several times, each time consistent with the age. But we don't hear, we don't care. But, when it comes to blaming, we are very quick to blame. God doesn't speak. Now, he has spoken in a language which is so modern, <laughs> English language, universal. Still we don't read. And yet we say that, you know, he doesn't speak. When we read through Savitri, all the answers are there. Not, I cannot imagine even a single question, fundamental question. Fundamental question which has not been answered and even the little th things in its fundamental sense has not been answered. So it's everything is there. Like it's after reading Savitri I began to understand that all illness is basically a disorder created by forces of disorder. We give names, fanciful names. And all healing is the force of harmony entering into it from another realm. The doctor, instrument, medicine, anything could become a channel. And then much later I read, you know, mother describing this in the, in the agenda, that yes, uh, doctors give names and fix an illness, but basically it is a force of disorder. And there, reading Sabitri, you also realize even behind that disorder, because a new harmony has to come, so you have to go through it as a passage. If you can endure the passage, the harmony will come. If you cannot endure the passage, then still the new harmony will come, but through the passage of death. I remember Just. walking into uh, the Arvind Eye Clinic and there in large, large letters, ultimately it is faith. Faith that cures. Hopefully one day we will start really practicing it. <laughs> Every time I look at in our nursing home, finally it is faith that cures. I only pray, Ma, one day, let all of us really <laughs> take recourse to that. But this is true, so true. And then comes these, uh, after describing this, then life beat pure in the corporeal frame. Uh, right now it is disfigured. Uh, all the desires, ambitions, they have disfigured life. Then life be pure. Action of Savitri. What happens when we read Savitri? Life once again recovers its pure and beautiful rhythm. The infernal gleam died and could slay no more. The gleam of hell which draws. And this is the gleam. That's very interesting. Yes, it's not a light. It's not a light. And it's not darkness either. No. It's a gleam. It attracts. But it's meant to draw and slay. 
and when this comes it awakens such to that consciousness that one can see it and look at it could slay no more hell split across its huge abrupt facade so however see this line itself is so liberating the difficulty may seem impossible and suddenly it will collapse like a house of cards and i have seen this both as an experience inwardly outward it may look like an impossible situation but one has to just endure with faith and call suddenly it's like a facade abruptly tends and you enter into a very different kind of harmony but thing is that we have to keep that hope and continue otherwise if we enter into that uh, dark gloom then it's dangerous and he says the impossible today is tomorrow's past yes the 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 gods pick up today is the gods pick and choose for man today's impossibles for the future's base earth's winged chimeras are truth steeds in heaven the impossible is the sign of things to be because the fact that we have conceived and aspired means it is granted all that is needed is the time and see this again this wonderful line as if a magic building were undone we don't realize that all this darkness is like an illusion it's it's an asuric maya it appears should we to describe the action of the adverse forces and the hostile says usually they will pick up an element of nature but they will make it appear so huge and he uses the word they will clap a himalayan in front himalaya in front of you where there was only something very small clap a himalaya they will make it look very huge impossible and if you get caught in that illusion then it's but it is undone there is a whole story in one of the shiv puran where mother parvati she is apparently trapped by one of the asuras who is an aspect of shiva himself born out of ansh of shiva jalantar i think some people may have heard the name and he creates the illusory kailash and he says that you know you stay here you pray and it seems as if she doesn't understand not realizing that the moment you do that one day this building will be undone and along with it you will be undone so the same thing in ramayana where sita is taken a captive but here it's described that the asura creates a maya and it's like a magical building which gives the impression and one day the facade collapses and when it collapses because nothing can stay if you bring truth there that's what is meant in the mother if you bring truth and falsehood together so somebody asked that will truth go away he said no but your falsehood will collapse <laughs> that will be <laughs> the grace will not allow it to remain so here it is like a, as if a magic building were undone night opened and vanished like a gulf of dream our parting was the dream that's how at the end he says no nolini tells the story of his going out one night to do his pranams to shri arbindo and he stands next to the samadhi and shri arbindo appears to him in golden light fully fully supermentalized and nolini says i was about to bow and touch his feet and he sees that the feet are cloven that it's the asura he said had i touched them i would have been lost yes and mother remarked that that is taken a form of shirbindo so this this is the kind of illusions that these powers so one should be so careful since you spoke about it we see today and it's you know uh, one has to be careful there is nobody who can replace mother and shirbindo this we must always remember whatever people may claim and claims are very easy to make uh, there are movements which have come up uh mother mira and then i mean names are being used and you know uh as somebody who is teaching a method which shurbindos like a direct disciple and descendant these are the asuric ways because these are the easy traps and after all it's an aggrandizement it's so simple to the eye 
why would somebody do that i know of uh, you know yogis who read all india magazine by the way speak what mother has written there almost verbatim but pass of his yogi now this is dangerous it's much better to be simple and say bhaiya i don't know much but this much i know please come in <laughs> the thousands so that's where one has to be careful because there the dressing is so perfect so brilliant so that's where one has to be careful so this fundamental humility and this knowledge repeatedly that nobody can ever not only replace come near shirvindu and the mother so we must understand that all of us who do things like this it's a joy of sharing but there she remains herself and infinite so here comes this night opened and vanished like a gulf of dream into beings gap scooped out as empty space in which she had filled the place of absent god so what is night he has still to invade it that's all so it's a wait hoping her lord to touch to clasp to be krishna poem no all nature is a wide enamored pause hoping her lord to touch to clasp to be so night is a waiting and the beloved comes there but he comes in another raiment or rather without any raiments he says come meet me as the eternal lover and beloved and when we meet then the night is fulfilled and the day breaks so it's a night of eternal longing if i may put it like that night is meant for longing and day is the fulfillment so that's how there poured a wide intimate and blissful dawn intimate because it's a lost dawn it's something which the soul has witnessed through lives moments scattered moments here and there the true psychic life in man and suddenly there are people who suddenly feel that connection intimate they come to samadhi i know of someone and quite a number of people this is a common experience and they feel we are home many people use this expression he suddenly felt i am home so that you know intimacy which is not outer first time somebody has come and one feels it healed where all things that times torn heart had made what a marvelous expression what is times torn heart we cannot see things in their totality we see them in fragments so when we see things in fragments and don't have the full picture it bleeds it pains it's a rupture literally and out of that emerges a kind of parallel creation a kind of which human mind creates a hell which is creation of that because we are seeing a moment and based on that our mind is you know doing things so man time stone heart had made and sorrow could live no more in nature's breast this another thing which mother has spoken and i have seen so many times um the ultimate cure for depression coming from a properly qualified psychiatrist <laughs> uh, through the medical school allopathic medical school is savitri if one can really read it every day it is the cure for depression it even if you are open even just one passage just read it with that little trust and then you'll see that you know it how it magically takes away of course it will take some time to get it established but we'll see that for one magic hour it is gone and then it comes read again how many times to take that dosage as often as the <laughs> illness lasts <laughs> till you find that you have started enjoying it the illness is gone away then you feel thanks to the depression that i got in touch with <laughs> these beautiful lines which i often quote if the chamber's door is even a little ajar what then can prevent the lord from stealing in yes or no or who prevent his kiss on the sleeping soul on the sleeping soul 
already he is near that's how he describes yeah division ceased to be for god was there so in savitri this truth at least having read all the works of shirbindu and the mother and they have spoken about it but savitri it comes with one liners with that perfection where he says our smallest parts have room for deepest needs each part in us desires the absolute he was like an eye opener he comes unseen into our darker parts darkest parts curtain, curtain by the darkness the does his work till they to feel the need and will for change so then you realize that it's a preparation all darkness is a preparation for the dawn we create a division between dark and bright light and dark and like that we have created division and so to escape from this into that but here this dark is a waiting for the dawn bring that light here invoke if you are if we find ourselves in darkness in volume 2 the mother describes it that if you are walking through the night she addresses man that uh, and a few words for those who despair it says you are walking alone in the night and she says that i am sharing with you something which uh, the the it has been experienced of course her own experience is describing it's very evident and says if you are walking in the night gather the gifts of the stars which is the wisdom so nothing is in vain which the one has made all these lines in savitri our error is his steps upon the way our error weds new truth on the way when you read then you discover everything is part of a huge plan about the darkness and light i love this quote our sense by its incapacity mm. has invented darkness yes. in truth there is only light only but it is a light either above or below our poor human vision's limited range for do not think that light comes from the suns they are only a reflection of that which is forever forever absolutely god is everywhere and where god is there is light this is the life divine is it yeah god is everywhere and where there is god there is light healed were all things that times torn heart had made uh, there you just said it and sorrow could live no more in nature's breast division ceased to be for god was there god is everywhere this simple thing god was there this soul let the conscious body with its ray not only does the soul awaken even at the physical level it has its impact matter and spirit mingled and were one so this is the magic of savitri and birth of savitri so it has it's the longest labor that shurbindo has made i think the only other book he worked um, so frequently or with such a labor but of course savitri is the ultimate that he had to abandon at one point of time is the iliad he speaks of that ilion but uh, he says that he worked several times and in 1930s he says that my two important works savitri and ilion but eventually of course savitri was meant to be the ultimate so this is savitri and uh, obviously it is the complete message as you said all else is a preparation savitri is the message what was that um, sentence of the mother savitri exactly. yeah is the message all else is a preparation if you like we will continue this next week yeah yeah we will continue this this is uh, yeah very good yes very good namaste namaste